Hold up. Hold on, they, they casted who to play what? <laughs> Welcome to Beyond the Screen. I'm Nate, and today we're breaking down the top 10 worst casting choices ever made in Hollywood. Number 10, Mindy Kaling as Velma. Mindy Kaling is best known for her time as Kelly Kapoor on the hit mockumentary series The Office, as well as her own sitcom titled The Mindy Project, playing a fictionalized version of herself. Most recently, Mindy was cast as Velma Dinkley, the main character of a soft Scooby-Doo cartoon remake. While the original version of Scooby-Doo was aimed at at kids and boasted a colorful ensemble of mystery solving teens in the 60s, Velma just kind of throws all of that out the window, like completely, aiming to grab the attention instead of an older, more mature audience. Not only are all the characters and their personalities vastly different, but Mindy actually opted to have the titular Scooby-Doo just left out of the script entirely. That's right, this show is dogless, and what's worse is Mindy's performance as Velma. The character was originally known for being shy, but a highly integral member of the team. She solved most of the clues and pieced together things that nobody else could, but Mindy's version of Velma is like, hashtag woke. She's always pointing out social issues and comparing things to the past to these days. She's constantly trying to bone, which is uncomfortable, always complaining about something that someone else has done. Oh, and by the way, she's terrible at solving stuff? Seriously, it used to take Velma less than 22 minutes to solve a mystery. Not an entire season, dude. Not to mention the meta jokes and dialogue. That is uh, just, this is just oh so bad. Everything about this show was a misstep and Mindy played a massive part in that. Number nine, Dwayne Johnson as Hercules. Feels like Dwayne Johnson is in at least two acts action movies every year. Whether he's a part of an existing franchise or he's trying to create his own, this man is always busy. So you may be a little confused, like, wait, when did Dwayne Johnson play Hercules in a movie? Well, the answer is in 2014. Johnson co-produced and starred in a film chronicling the adventures of Hercules and his crew, but sadly, Johnson was far from godlike in this one. The character had been significantly altered from the original mythos, and the main change being that Hercules didn't have any powers. Like, at all. He's just a super strong guy who's really good at acting and making props. Not only is the character bogged down and powerless, but Johnson's performance felt stale and lifeless. Like he just wanted to get the project over with so he could either start the franchise or just write the whole thing off as an oopsie doopsie. While Johnson isn't really known for his range as an actor, he has been consistently entertaining over the years, so it's really sad to see such a good idea go to waste. Number eight, Jared Leto as the Joker. Jared Leto is <laughs> just a little kooky. He's been very open in interviews about his extreme approach to method acting. For his portrayal as the Joker in the now inferior version of DC's The End Yourself Squad, yeah that's right, I know the actual word but I can't say it, Leto prepared by making his fellow castmates beyond uncomfortable. Since he was playing a crazy clown crime boss, he felt it was necessary to send a rat to co-star Margot Robbie, who was playing his love interest Harley Quinn, as a gift. He also gifted the entire cast with a desecrated pig that was brought to set by a hired goon. He hid snakes in their dressing rooms and trailers, and he even went so far as to leave his fellow castmates used adult toys and prophylactics. All of this is terrible enough, but what's the worst part? He still sucked. Yeah, the movie as a whole is dreadful, but arguably the worst part of the whole thing is the inclusion of Leto's Joker. He was the first person to don the iconic suit and makeup following the death of Heath Ledger, who was and still is the ultimate live action Joker. Leto had big shoes to fill, and unfortunately those shoes were filled with poo poo and set on fire when the film was released. Many people called his portrayal annoying and difficult to watch. Well, thankfully we only saw 15 minutes of the Joker in the final project when Leto had a purportedly filmed an entire solo flick worth of footage. Hey, for the first time, please don't release that hashtag, just no Joker cut. Number seven, George Clooney as Batman. Ah, uh, the mid 90s, when things were simpler and people were uh, moving and grooving. I don't know, I was born in 99. Despite that though, I was fortunate enough to grow up with an unhealthy obsession with movies and a lot of VHS tapes that needed to be watched. And one of the worst performances I ever came across was George Clooney as the Cape Crusader Batman in 1997's Batman and Robin. Now, while Chris O'Donnell's portrayal as Robin has been critically panned for years. He did originally star as the character in the film's predecessor, Batman Forever, but the studio decided to keep him around. So, whatever. But they did recast Batman though, which seriously, what was wrong with Michael Keaton? He's still my favorite. The role was offered to George Clooney who had been coming off a slew of blockbuster hits like One Fine Day and Dusk Till Dawn. At first this seemed like an okay casting choice, but we were quickly proven wrong. Clooney's performance is lifeless. He almost never moves his face throughout the entire runtime of the film, his line delivery is cheesy and not in a good way, and his overall demeanor as the Dark Knight just like didn't suit the character. Thankfully, Clooney
Clooney wouldn't be the last Batman, but he was certainly the worst. Number six. Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. Keeping in with our DC theme here, in 2016, the world was gifted with one of the worst DC movies ever made. It was called Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. And the plot? Batman and Superman disagree about stuff. During the film's total runtime of two and a half hours, Batman and Superman actually verse each other for about 10 minutes. But for the majority of the film, we actually end up spending a lot of time with OG Superman villain Lex Luthor, played by Jesse Eisenberg. Hmm. Jesse's performance as the menacing founder of LexCorp was anything but menacing. His portrayal of the character was weaselly and excitable. He kind of reminded people of Jim Carrey's portrayal of the Riddler in Batman Forever. Now throughout the movie we come to learn Lex's plan, but I honestly stopped caring about him the minute that he said his first line. Many fans agreed that the role was highly miscasted and that Jesse would have been much better suited to play a manic character like the Joker or the Riddler. But instead we're stuck with two hours of <laughs> well, that's interesting. Number five, Tom Cruise in The Mummy. The first movie starring a mummified monster came in 1932's The Mummy. The concept was an ancient mummified corpse is brought back to life by ancient magic and begins terrorizing the nearby archaeologists. While the original hasn't really held up to today's standards, a solid trilogy of films were released back between 1999 and 2008, starring Canadian treasure Brendan Fraser as the leading man Rick O'Connell. The movies were a hit and are now considered by many many people to be cult classics. It was kind of strange then when it was announced that the series was going to get a reboot as part of the Universal Studios new MonsterVerse project. They intended to reboot every major horror icon from the 30s and 40s. Dracula, the Wolfman, the Invisible Man, everyone's coming back baby. And to kick things off they got Tom Cruise to lead The Mummy. Now while Tom is no stranger to being a leading man, being the face of the Mission Impossible franchise, this was a massive misstep in casting. Not only was his performance bland and lifeless, Cruise himself tampered with the script and character development on set and accidentally made the movie even more boring than it already probably was. For a movie called The Mummy, we spent almost two hours with Tom and like 30 minutes with The Mummy herself. The entire project evolved into an attempt at another franchise for Tom to dominate, but instead, the movie received such poor reviews that it resulted in the entire MonsterVerse project being shut down. <laughs> Good job, Tom. Number four, Topher Grace as Venom. Spider-Man has been rebooted into a live action action series three times now, including the weird Japanese Spider-Man version from 1978, which was essentially just Power Rangers. One of the most iconic portrayals of Spider-Man in any medium is Tobey Maguire's stint as Peter Parker from 2010 to 2007. He played Spider-Man over the course of three movies, with various celebrities playing his villainous counterparts. The elites included Willem Dafoe as Green Goblin, Thomas Hayden Church as Sandman, Alfred Molina as Doc Ock, but guess what? Oh, in the third movie, someone had an awesome idea to give Spider-Man three villains to fight at once. And one of them was going to be the legendary comic book baddie Venom. In the comics, Venom is an alien symbiote that latches onto a host, usually drawn as like a big jock type. Well, director Sam Raimi said, you know what? You know who would make a really good Venom? You know who would make a really scary Venom? If we get the guy who played Eric from that 70s show. Yeah, Topher Grace was hired as the big baddie Venom, and he did a a job. While in the Venom suit, he was just obnoxious and overly confident. He thought he was clever and suave, but it really just came across as weaselly and creepy. Anytime he was trying to be intimidating, he just sounded like a kid pretending to fight crime in his bedroom. Since Tom Hardy took over the role in 2018, longtime Spider-Man fans have come down even harder on Grace as Tom Hardy reinvented the character and did it whew, so well. Number three, Mike Myers as Cat in the Hat. All right, I want to start off by saying I personally enjoyed this movie, but but as many of my friends know, I love terrible movies. So here we go. The Cat in the Hat was a children's book published in 1957 and written by Dr. Seuss, aka Theodore Seuss. His books were often adapted into short cartoon films, with the most famous one being The Grinch Who Stole Christmas, starring the acclaimed horror icon Boris Karloff as the titular Grinch. However, cartoon briefly shifted to live action, gifting us with Jim Carrey's iconic turn as the Grinch, and of course, our next entry on this list, Mike Myers as the titular cat in Cat in the Hat. Mike was well known for his role on Saturday Night Live, as well as his successful comedy career starring in cult classics like Wayne's World and the Austin Powers franchise. People were initially excited to see what Myers would bring to the wild world of Dr. Seuss, and it turns out that he brought fart jokes, adult innuendos, and a Boston accent for some reason. The film was critically panned for Myers portraying the cat in an overtly adult fashion when the movie is supposed to be aimed at a younger audience. The cat went to an underground nightclub. He did a quick sponsorship 
for Universal Studios, and he even gets hit in the no-no zone with a baseball bat. Seriously, who read this script and gave him permission to make that? It's like Mike just walked on set one day dressed as a big cat, and people were like, well, he, he seems to know what he's doing. Let's just let him go. Let him do his thing. Number two, Scarlett Johansson in Ghost in a Shell. Scarlett Johansson is not a bad actor by any means. She's delivered some very impressive performances over the years, with roles in films like Her and Lost in Translation. But one thing she can do without question is kick major butt. Throughout her career, Scarlett has appeared in several action blockbusters, including the flick Lucy from 2014, as well as her iconic role as Black Widow in the Marvel Universe. It makes sense that in 2017, Scarlett would be offered a role in the live action adaptation of Ghosts in the Shell, which was a popular anime action series. The film follows Scarlett as Major Mira Killian, as the first of her kind, a human that has died and been reborn with cybernetic enhancements to become the ultimate soldier. The movie was critically panned by audiences for its inclusion of Scarlett in the main role, as the anime featured prominently Asian voice actors and characters. Many felt that she was just another example of Hollywood whitewashing and felt the role should have gone to an actual Asian actor and not just the biggest name that would sell the most tickets. And they were probably right about that because her performance was stiff and lifeless. The script was rough to say the least and the backlash tinted the overall energy of the movie, which ultimately became a flop. And number one, everybody in The Last Airbender. If you're a fan of the Avatar The Last Airbender show, the original show, which first aired on Nickelodeon in 2005, followed a young man named Aang, also known as the Airbender. In this world, people are divided into four nations, the Water Tribe, the Earth Kingdom, the Fire Nation, and the Air Nomads. Aang was adorable and fun. His character was full of heart and all he wanted to do in the world was be good and realize his full potential as the master of the elements and he had some pretty cool friends to come with him along the way. It was kind of exciting when a live action adaptation of the series was going to hit theaters in 2010. The film was being directed by M. Night Shyamalan who had just come off of a string of successful horror and thriller titles and it made people curious as to what the final product might look like. But what we ended up getting was just, just wrong. It's all wrong. <laughs> Not only was the script a pile of garbage, but the casting choices were ridiculous. Avatar is the prime example of whitewashing a property. The cast is lacking in diversity, and the people that they chose to portray the iconic characters were terrible. Katara and Sokka were basically just there to take Ung from place to place. That's right. They changed the main character's name to the sound that a cat makes when it's trying to throw up. <clears throat> Ung himself went from being a fun and likable kid to kind of an annoying and whiny one. Every time he begins to speak, we just want to snap our fingers and wake up in front of the TV on a Saturday morning. Oh, Nickelodeon, I miss you. And there you have it, guys. Those are the worst casting choices of all time. Do you agree or disagree with this list? And hey, do you guys want to see a part two? Because there's lots of people to trash on. Leave your comments down below. As always, thank you for watching our content here at the channel, and we hope you have an epic day.